In today's episode, Siri asks, what's the best way to measure brand awareness? Among all the searching I've done, it seems like people have a lot of different takes on measuring brand awareness. Absolutely. People have tons of different takes on measuring brand awareness. A lot of those uh, things being done and put out there are by individual vendors promoting their software. There is, There are a couple different ways uh, to measure brand awareness. The gold standard for measuring brand awareness is unaided recall surveying among your target audience. So if your target audience is chief technology officers, you would commission a market research firm to check in with them once a quarter or whatever and say, hey, uh, in your experience, please name five vendors who provide, I don't know, uh, email marketing services and see what these people remember, unprompted, unaided, see if they recall your brand. And if they do, great, you're, you have brand awareness within your target segment. If they had never name your brand at all, it's like, okay, well, mm, we're not reaching the target audience. Uh, now, market research, proper market research requires significant investment. Um, uh, the firm I recommend typically is a company called Edison Research. They do top shelf market research and they do it properly. Um, there are a lot of companies that call themselves market research companies, but market research like that should be uh, my friend Tom Webster, who works at Edison Research, calls it reassuringly expensive. Um, you should be planning on you know mid five figures to low six figures for the budget to do something like that because you you're going to want to check in with these people frequently, and you need somebody. If your audience is, is like senior executives, you're going to need credible market research companies to get to those executives. You can't just spin up a survey monkey and email them. It's you'll get like a, a, a completely statistically insignificant response rate. So the second way, which is a precursor to the market research, is to use some of your digital metrics to start to assemble a score uh, that will inform your market research. It is not a replacement for market research. It is a a prerequisite of the market research to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do in order to get people in the door. And that digital metric combination really comes out of four buckets. Bucket number one is a branded organic search. So the number of people who search for you by name over time and then uh, the conversion metrics that go along with that. So the brand number of branded organic searches, returning users through branded organic searches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's going to be you know, 20, 30 variables. If it was a spreadsheet, it'd be like 20 columns. Coverage, so public relations, media relations, who, uh, influencer relations, who's writing about you? Um, what are they writing? What's the sentiment? What's the tone? What's the uh, importance? What's the SEO value? Uh, what are the number of clicks on articles, social shares? All those metrics around coverage are uh, a second big bucket. And that's you're gonna, you're talking potentially uh, another spreadsheet of like 50 or 60 columns. The third is conversation, people talking about you. And this could be influencers, but it could also be regular people, your target audience, and then all the subsequent metrics that those generate, likes, comments, shares, um, yeah, profile clicks, all the works. It's a, that's going to be a gigantic spreadsheet. And finally, in the fourth bucket, you're going to need all of your down funnel metrics. <clears throat> so... Uh, you have your awareness sort of top of funnel. Then you have web traffic, new users, returning users, time on page by segment, <clears throat> um, goal conversions. And then you get out of web analytics, you go into your marketing automation system. You know, the, uh, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, opportunities, deals won, deals lost, etc. You're going to need to put together this spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet's going to have probably several hundred columns. Uh, <clears throat> You will need data science techniques to properly process this data. There is no, there's no human way to do this, at least not in anything that would take you know, less than two years of you doing nothing but that, um, because it is a massive undertaking. The, it's a five-step process. You need to do ingestion and cleaning, meaning take all the data in from all these sources, clean it up, fix missing or, or broken data, remove anomalies, and, and so on and so forth. So that's step one. Step two is what's called centering and scaling, where you need to normalize the data so that you can do apples-to-apples -apples comparisons a little more cleanly. For example, if you are 
looking at branded organic search and you're looking at social conversation, this is going to be have very different scales. You know, it's very difficult to, to do a comparison of those metrics without normalizing them, you know, center them, scale them, uh, make them more like each other. The third step is doing what's called variable importance identification, and that is that in a lot of cases that's going to take actual machine learning um, to run every possible combination of those variables against a, a, a an outcome, a target like sales, and figure out which metrics in combination have a high correlation to the actual outcome you care about. We know that you know there's there's a sequence within the funnel. People don't necessarily, you know, they don't, they don't follow it linearly, but they, there is a, a, a path from awareness to purchase. People don't make a purchase without awareness. Um, that's, that's illogical. So the variable importance measurement helps you identify the, the variables that have a mathematically high relationship. Um, once you've done that, you've gotten rid of, you know, 80, 90% of the variables that don't have any mathematical relationship to the outcome you care about, um, you'll want to build a couple of models. Um, you're going to build an outcome model which says, hey, we, if we want more sales, we need to test doing more of these things. And then you'll go back and rerun variable importance to do what's called intermediary KPI modeling. And this is, especially for bigger companies, there are a lot of dependencies on a sale. Uh, a problem I used to have at a company I used to work with was that you know marketing kept being asked for more and more and more leads every quarter, more leads, more leads, more leads, and sales was closing at something like a one percent closing rate. So benchmarking off of sales as the only outcome meant that a lot of marketing data got thrown out because the salespeople were incompetent. Um, they 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 couldn't have sold fire to a a, a freezing person. Um, so intermediary KPI modeling says okay. For your department, what outcome do you have responsibility for? If you work in corporate communications, awareness may be a, uh, the, the variable to measure. Uh, for if you're the web guy or the web girl, you you know new traffic to the website is your KPI, and so you'll want to rerun that variable importance for each departmental outcome, so that each department understands, hey, these are the things that we know contribute to the outcome that we care about. And again, build models for that. And then the last step of the process is once you've got these models, you have to test them. If, for example, tweets on Tuesdays that contain a poop emoji have the highest mathematical correlation uh, to the outcome you care about, you cannot assume that correlation equals causality. You have to build a testing plan to say, okay, now let's do five more tweets on Tuesdays and put three poop emoji in the tweet instead of two uh, and see if the, that commensurate increase in activity yields to the comm a commensurate increase, a proportional increase in outcome. And so there's that testing plan to, to bring to life that model and, and validate that the model either works or does not work. It, this is the scientific method, um, just using a, a lot more math and data. It, you, you come up with a hypothesis, you test it, you analyze it, you refine your hypothesis until you're, you have a proven model. And that's how you develop a working model, a working measurement model for brand awareness. You can't just throw a bunch of numbers in a spreadsheet, average them and add them all up and call it brand awareness because you don't actually know what does and does not contribute. You have to go through this process of testing and you need to use data science and machine learning if you want the model to be credible and proven and, and develop a testing plan that is workable. Because again, if you've got a spreadsheet with 500 variables, testing each one and then testing each combination of one, you'll run out of lifetime before you, you get through even one test. A machine has to help you do it. So great question. It's a complex question and it requires data science help. It's not something that you can build a credible model for by yourself just with a spreadsheet. Um, if you have follow-up questions, please leave them in the comments and of course subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Want help solving your company's data, analytics, and digital marketing problems? Visit TrustInsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.